Hey everyone, welcome back to Jardev, and welcome to the first episode of a new series that I'm calling My Watch is Ended. Obviously it's another play on of the Night's Watch from Game of Thrones, just like my first impressions series is called John's Watch. So this is very much like a continuation of John's Watch. Uh, if you're not familiar with the John's Watch format somehow by this point, I've done like 500 plus videos in it. Uh, it's just a first impressions series. Very occasionally I'll do like a full proper review video, but usually like I'll play a game for about 20 to 30 minutes and then at the end just kind of talk about what I thought based on the first impressions. And for the most part after I've done that video I usually don't go back to the game. In some rare cases I do and I kind of thought why, why have I not done a follow-up on some of these games that I do and that's what this series is going to be. So definitely let me know what you think of the format. Um, I'm pretty excited to be able to talk about some of these games that I have played a ton more. In this first episode, I'm going to be talking about World End Syndrome, which I played on the Nintendo Switch. So I finished this up last night, and I do not mind admitting that I absolutely teared up in the ending. I <laughs> I thought I was doing fine, and I, I just, I cried right at the end. It was, I was not expecting it to kind of get to me like that, but yeah, just finished it last night, so it's really fresh with me. Very, very emotional. So my Switch says I've played 10 hours or more of it. It's very annoying that the Switch doesn't have an actual, like, hours tracked, but I guess it's better than, like, some consoles do. Um, I would guess somewhere probably closer to 20 hours, but not quite at 20. So it took me, I will say, between 10 and 20 hours to finish the whole thing. Um, I did all the routes, including the true ending. So if you watch the John's Watch on it, the stuff I covered in that video was just the first 30 minutes of not even the main game. That was basically just the prologue. I think the prologue took me about four hours or so. And by the end of the four hours, you come to a choice, but you don't have a choice. You only have one option. So you choose that and slight spoiler, but like it's so early in the game, you get the bad ending immediately. And you're thinking, what What have I done? Was was that it? What could I have done differently? But then if you go and reload your save, you'll find that when you get to that same choice, you now have a second choice. And when you do that second choice, it puts you past the bad ending um, and puts you into the full game, which is pretty big. So it's a bit more than a visual novel. It's a little bit kind of like time management sim. Each day you'll have to choose something to do for three times. There's like morning afternoon and night and on each of these times you'll be shown the the map screen and you just choose a location to go to and sometimes you'll you'll find someone to talk to there sometimes there won't be anything happening there and there's there's six characters in the game that you you talk to a lot five of them have endings the sixth is Kensuke who you probably saw in the John's Watch video he's just he's he's comic relief he's just he's he's a funny guy he's like your your best friend kind of thing but the other five characters, basically you have to do all five of their endings in order to beat the game and get to the true ending. But the thing with this game is that you have to be very, very precise in what choices you make in order to get these characters' endings. So the very first time I played, I just kind of like poodled around for the first third of the game, like not really knowing what I was doing, like what ending I was trying to go for. By about a third of the way in, I figured out which character I wanted to get the ending of, and once again, I, I tried tried to get that ending, but ended up with the bad ending, because it's very, very difficult to play this game blind. So I think pretty much everybody's first game or first playthrough will go like that. You'll get the bad ending in the prologue, then you'll get to the main game, try and find the right character, and not manage to get it properly. Which is totally fine, like, I don't mind failing as long as I play, like, the first playthrough blind. But luckily there was a fantastic guide. Um, it's a spoiler-free guide, so I'll have a link to it in the description. It's a PS4 trophy guide, but that is it, it, it also helped me get all the endings for all the characters. But something pretty different about this game is that you can't just kind of pick and choose which endings you want to do. Like, the, the first time I played through, like, I chose the character I wanted to do, got her ending, and then I was like, okay, I, I might just do, like, one more ending, because I wasn't like super invested in the game by this point, so I was thinking like I'll just do one more ending. 
So I was following the guide for that ending. Uh, that's the one on screen right now, actually, Yukino's ending. Uh, it's really early in the the playthrough, so there's nothing, like, spoilery in it. But following the guide, I noticed that, like, sometimes, like, the right option wasn't quite there. And by about halfway through, I realized, like, I was, I was missing some of, like, the CGs that I should have been having, according to the guide. And that's when I realized that not only do your actions in the game have to be very precise, but you also have to do the endings in the right order. There's basically what I kind of call, I, I, I call them like different tiers of characters. So Saya, Rei, and Maimi all are like tier one characters, I guess. You can do those three endings in any order, and it doesn't matter which order you do them, but you have to do all three of those first. Then after that, you can go on to the tier two character, which is Yukino, and and you cannot do Yukino's ending without doing the other three first. And then after you've done Yukino's ending, you can do the last character, uh, Miu Amana's ending. And the whole time, all through the game, you get like this, like the occasional glimpse that something isn't quite right. Like the first three endings, like the tier one endings, they're they're mostly they're pretty slice of life, like. Towards the end, like, you see a couple of things that are like, oh, that's that's a bit weird. But pretty much slice of life, you know, you get a nice happy ending and everything, and then you start over. But each time you successfully get an ending and then start a new game, you get a little bit of a cutscene at the start. And each time you get a new ending, that cutscene gets a little bit longer. Until by the end, you see something, you're like, whoa, what does this mean? I'm trying to keep this really vague because I really think people should play it for themselves. So then when you do the fourth ending, the Yukino ending, by the time you get to the end, things are things are picking up. You know, things are are getting pretty weird. You kind of get a bit of bit of like an ending, you get some closure, and then you have to start the fifth playthrough, the Miyu ending. And by the time you start the fifth ending, you've seen the full cutscene that you you get bits and pieces of at the beginning of that ending. So like most of them I like, the, the first three I played through, I would do about, like, half, half the playthrough a night. But for the Yukino ending and the my um, and the, the Miu ending, I did each one, like, in one, one solid playthrough. Couldn't put it down for those two. And then once you get the Miu ending, you unlock the true ending playthrough from the home screen. And the true ending is just phenomenal. Um, in, in the guide I was using... It, like, lists all of these. It's got the true ending, uh, like, walkthrough. And then after that, it's got, like, various things. Um, like, you can... It, it tells you how to go get all the collectibles, like, any CGs you might have missed. Um, like, all tips and missions and stuff. And, like, I, I was looking through the the guide, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go back and do those afterwards, because I love this game, and I'd like to 100% it. And after I got the true ending, I just, like, put my Switch down and just, like sat there for like 10 minutes thinking and I could not bring myself to go back into the game after getting the true ending like in in a good way because I didn't want to kind of like I didn't want like my last memories of the game to be me getting a collectible I wanted it to be the true ending it's so good it's so good sorry this was a little bit all over the place I was just like it, it's so fresh in my mind like every night I'd be like, okay, I need to talk about this in the video. And I think I think I nailed everything that I wanted to talk about. But it was just kind of all all off the top of my head. Just just talking about what I felt about the game. I loved World End Syndrome. So good. I can wholeheartedly recommend this game. So it's 5039 Canadian. That's probably like 45 US. I th that's pretty much what all the visual novels are costing. Um, I noticed that Clanad is now up for the same price on Switch. So, I mean, it's very much up to you to decide if, like, 20 hours is worth 50, 50 bucks Canadian, 45 US or whatever. Um, I definitely think it is. I, like, I, I love this game. Uh, I think that's pretty obvious. Anyway, that was the first episode of My Watch Has Ended, where I talked about World End Syndrome on Switch. Love that game. Um, let me know your thoughts on the format, if it needs changing up or anything. Um, I, I like the idea of the, the, the format. Obviously it's going to be very infrequent because, like I said, most of the games from John's Watch I don't go back to. 
But anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!